Welcome to another episode of Wealth Uncensored. Today I'm joined by Stephen Piccoli, who is a partner at Shosti, which is a real estate management, brokerage, and advisory company based in, in Dubai. I've known Stephen for a few years now. He and his team are one of the few real estate people that actually know what they're doing in the UAE and that are reliable. Stephen, thanks for joining me today. Yeah, thanks so much for, for having me. So listen, did I sum up your business properly? So you do you do all three things, right? So you can ad- advise people on mm-hmm. purchases, then actually do the brokerage for the purchase. And then if it's an investment, you guys can do all the management for all of that stuff as well, right? Welcome to the Wealth Uncensored podcast. Straight talk about everything that impacts your wealth. In each episode, I share what I've learned through my own experience and two decades of helping high net worth clients structure their affairs to minimize taxes and protect their assets for the next generation. I'll also feature special guests who are experts in their own field, sharing their knowledge and experience to help you protect what's yours. I'm your host, Jimmy Sexton. Let's dive into today's show. So you you hit the nail straight on the head. The only thing I wanted to add, just at the, the latter part, for the management, it can be either long-term lease, it can be short-term like Airbnb management, or of course, supporting you uh, as an end user moving into the property. You guys have been super busy the last couple of years. I mean, you, I've been in, in Dubai eight years now, I think. How long, you've been there longer than I have, right? Yeah, yeah, almost 11 years coming up this uh, this fall. Mm-hmm. Both of us sped COVID there. and We've both seen what's, what's happened in, in Dubai since COVID. And I mean, it's just absolutely booming for a multitude of reasons. And yeah. I think as, as maybe you saw, you know, the labor government won in, in the UK and, and they vowed to abolish uh, the sort of tax advantage living regime there known as, as the non-DOM regime. And I know a yeah. lot of our clients in the UK are already looking at, at the UAE as, as an alternative. And so one of the things I wanted to talk about today, because I think there's people that are obviously looking to invest in, in Dubai because they want to live there. There's people that want to invest in, in Dubai because they want to have investment properties that they want to rent out, as you said, long-term or short-term. Correct. I think one of the things that, that I've always come across, I mean, until I met you guys, whenever anybody asked me for a referral to a real estate agent or somebody that could give advice on, on real estate, I was like, I'm, I'm staying out of this. You know, so many people in Dubai are just unreliable. They don't return calls. They don't show up at appointments when they're supposed to. They just try to sell the buildings where they're going to get the best commission or where they know somebody rather than like really digging into, you know, what's going to be best for for the client. And I know that that's something that you guys are really good at on the the advisory side. I wanted to start there. For people that are are looking to to move to Dubai, I think even those you can break up sort of into two categories, right? Those with families and not with families. You know, what are sort of the hot spots that you're seeing at the moment in terms of you know, where somebody who's moving to Dubai might want to look at, at properties? I think so. There's a lot of hotspots. Before getting into the the details on specific areas, I want to talk about why actually the Dubai market is so red hot right now. You spoke about COVID and this is one of the, the major impacts that we're still feeling today. And let me just give a little explainer. Okay. Yeah? So the inventory currently is actually quite limited in terms of what's available out there. So this is why the market is so red hot and people are scooping up whatever properties are available, whether it's secondary market or off plan. And for those aren't familiar, off plan means a developer who is going to construct the building in the future. So I can purchase that property and in two, three, three and a half years, uh, it will be handed over to me. Yeah. But so yeah, COVID, man. So there was a peak back in 2014 in terms of real estate prices continued to drop and the bottom hit basically when uh, COVID came. During this time, a lot of inventory uh, was being shifted over to short-term rental or Airbnb management uh, because the returns are a bit uh, higher. So we have this set uh, inventory that's uh, on the market. And because of COVID, a lot of the the developers slowed down or even halted their development projects. Okay. So this means fast forward a couple of years, there's going to be less new inventory coming on the market. And uh, COVID was handled very well by the UAE government and Dubai government. 
And so we had a small lockdown, but as you might remember, things started to open up quite quickly. Business was trying to be done as usual. And in the world, it was one of the premier places to be, conduct business and actually live a normal life, as normal as it could be back then. As uh, we came out of the COVID era, more and more people wanted to move to Dubai because it already had a running start. And because of that, uh, people uh, had a hard time finding properties because I, I talked about that inventory, which wasn't really available. Yeah. And so for those who did have properties, people were able to command higher rents. So rents got higher and higher. The property prices were super low already. <clears throat> and uh, it started to look like, wow, this is an amazing place. Yeah, I can earn 10, 15% <laughs> returns. Yeah. And so... Um, Little by little, the prices started to catch up because the supply still was, uh, wasn't was enough. Over time, yeah, people more and more people started to come and the prices uh, continued to, uh, to increase. And uh, fast forward to today, this is kind of why we're at all-time record highs in terms of the, the market. So coming back to your original uh, question, yeah, why or what neighborhoods are, are red hot? <laughs> Almost every neighborhood is is red hot, but I think one of the most important factors is if you're moving to Dubai, you need to be able to select the location based on your needs. So this is super important. Do I want uh, essentially to be near the beach, ma'am, yeah. uh, or am I going to be uh, near the schools, for example, ma'am, yeah. or near my office? And so I think the most important aspect of advising clients is really focusing on the location. And, you know, it's the, the famous saying, the most important three things are location, location, location. So really, if you start there, yeah, if you're looking at the beach, so then I have to say Dubai Harbor is one of the hottest neighborhoods right now. It's adjacent to uh, Dubai Marina. There's a few buildings already constructed by Emar at the tip of the islands. But there's uh, four other projects by Damak, by Arada, by H and H, yeah, that are all, and also by uh, Shoba, all coming in and being developed. Yeah. If you're looking further out towards the the schools, I mean, there there's a plethora of options that uh, are really really interesting. For example, even JVC Jumeirah Village Circle uh, is kind of centrally located. Um, near schools, near uh, major highways, that uh, could be an interesting uh, choice. If you're looking for uh, villas, it depends. You know, do you want to buy off plan or secondary market? If you want a classic old neighborhood, still Arabian ranches, super super hot right now. Also, um, uh, other areas, Emirates Hills, a classic one uh, as well. Yeah. So, so it really, it all depends on the uh, the clients and what the, they're specifically looking for. I think it's important to hone in on where you want to be, and then you can find what's available out there on the markets. One of the things that, that you guys do so great, really looking at sort of a lot of things people don't think about a lot of times, right? Is do you want to be a more established neighborhood where you already, you know, maybe have like the infrastructure of restaurants and supermarkets and, you know, movie theaters yeah. and stuff like that? Or do you want to maybe buy off plan or go to a newer area that might be a little bit less money? But you're going to have to wait for everything to get built out, right? Or is this property going to be right next to a construction area where you're just going to be here like banging and building the next couple of years? Yeah, so this is a very valid point. But I've been in uh, Dubai for almost 11 years now. And out of that time, the majority of it has been in the marina. And I have to say, just marina is coming to its its full kind of neighborhood and charm and atmosphere. Yeah? And it's exactly what uh, you mentioned. You know, the person needs to be, the client needs to be very specific on what their needs are and, and what they're willing to put up with. <laughs> you know, but one, one thing I want to say is, you know, Dubai is very delivery uh, centric. <laughs> so you may not need uh, proximity to certain shops uh, because everything can be uh, delivered. But still, this is a very valid point and something to remember when, you know, searching for those potential uh, off-plan projects yeah, or secondary markets. One thing I wanted to highlight 
Regarding the secondary market, and it's kind of interesting, I don't know if you've wrapped your head around the, the numbers, but it's really crazy. So I, I talked about how there's kind of a limited supply right now, which is why the, the prices are so red hot. But if you look in the near future, there's going to be crazy, crazy supply coming online. So those developers hit the gas pedal and are constructing like no other. Everywhere you look in, in Dubai, there there's cranes. So this year, there should be about 35,000 units supplied to the market. So it could be studio, it could be villa, but um, the majority of those, let's say 75% of those are going to be apartments. Yeah. But you, you get the picture, yeah? So 35,000 uh, this year, uh, the following year is about 60,000. And then the year after is 100,000 uh, units coming online. So this is absolutely extraordinary. And one thing to keep in mind as well, if you're an investor, is the 2040 plan of Dubai. You know, we talked about some infrastructure, you know, talked about neighborhoods. If you're selecting, you know, what about supermarkets and, and um, you know, other retail uh, options or, you know, office, things like this. But if you look at a higher level, look at what the government is doing. Yeah? Look at what they're constructing. And so one of the, the big factors here, they want to increase the population to 5.8 million. And we're currently at about 3.5. Yeah. So they have certain tools in their toolkit that they're they're leveraging to try to attract more people. So you spoke you spoke about the election in, in the UK. What does this mean for tax purposes? One thing regarding uh, Dubai and, and UAE is the the tax incentives. Yeah, I mean, there's no income taxes, and um, there's very limited to VAT. So just five percent. They just introduced the corporate tax. But again, this is just on the corporate level at nine percent. But um, yeah, they have a, a, a ninety-day tax policy, where tax residency policy that uh, is easy to tap into. So we see this as one of the tools or levers that the UAE is using to attract uh, people to fulfill, you know, the the new supply. So it'll be really interesting to see. That's a heck of a lot of new supply coming online. But it feels like everywhere and everyone is coming here uh, in the near term. So it'll be really interesting to see how the market reacts in the near future. You're absolutely right. I mean, there's a tremendous amount of, of, uh, of, of inventory. And I mean, look, I just know from, from my client base, you know, a, a one-man advisor that works with you know, a limited number of clients. But even out of my client base, I mean, in the last two or three years, I've had several clients move to Dubai and I feel like a lot of my clients now, I mean, obviously, you know, some of them are looking to exit the UK and go to the UAE, yeah. even the ones that aren't, you know, necessarily exiting somewhere. Everybody's trying to get a foothold there, right? Like everybody wants to invest. They want to get a property. They want to get a visa. So, so yeah. they, they have the option. And I think that it's a, a good point that you made with the delivery. I've been outside of the, the UAE now for the past month and I, I really miss the delivery. <laughs> Everything's just so convenient. I mean, let's talk a little bit about investing, right? I think there's sort of, two different kinds of investing, right? I mean, there's sort of the investing in off-plan projects and speculating on the increase in, in value. So in the future, this can be rented out either long-term or short-term or, or sold and, and, and the gain realized. And then the people that want to buy something that's already built and rent it out. It's sort of a two-prong discussion. So one prong is, you know, are you seeing more people coming to invest with off-plan, speculating on the increase in value? Are you seeing more people... Yeah coming and, and wanting to rent it out and gain rental income. And then when we talk about the rental income, I want to break that into two parts and kind of talk a little bit about, you know, short-term versus long-term, because I, I know you, you had mentioned yeah. that the short-term kind of skyrocketed, but as you have explained to me in the past, because so many people went short-term, now long-term rents are, are, are kind of going up. So um, really interesting. Let's start about the, you know, investor versus end user, off-plan and secondary market. What we see is there's actually a, a big increase in purchases of the, the secondary, sorry, the, uh, the off-plan markets because there's not enough inventory of the secondary. And what we find, though, is that it's a huge increase of end users. Yeah. So residents or part-time residents looking for properties. Yeah. So it's not purely investment. And because of that, their mindset is a little different versus someone just focusing on ROI. Yeah? But we see, for example, a lot of people who are purchasing off plan who are looking to offset their rent costs. 
and they haven't been able to find what they want in the secondary markets. And so basically they're creating from scratch. Yeah? And there's nothing better than moving into a home that or a building that no one's ever lived in. Yeah? So it's that <laughs> new car smell. It's the new home smell. Yeah. Yeah, what we're seeing is really a lot of uh, people who are uh, purchasing what we're going to be uh, end users, which is an increase. But still, what we're seeing in our, our numbers is about 50-50. Yeah, for, for example, with the off-plan project. So 50% are still about uh, pure ROI, meaning investors. And the criteria that they're looking at are, are strictly numbers. And it's a lot of speculation on, on certain neighborhoods. I mean, we spoke about the 2040 plan of Dubai. And um, for example, one of the major infrastructure projects is uh, the investment of Maktoum airports. So basically, they're going to close down the, the original DXB airports <laughs> located behind me and move over to Maktoum. Maktoum's already existing, but it's a 35 billion US dollar uh, project. And so there's a lot of speculation about uh, projects over on that side of the city. Also, if you look, there's a second uh, Palm Island or set of islands, Palm Jabal Ali, also that side of the city, which has been uh, relaunched by Nakheel. And so you can see there's a whole bunch of projects and kind of a new center of gravity being pushed. So if you look at, I don't know, some neighborhood, for example, Dubai Hills, which used to be considered kind of a little further out, maybe not in the center. But if you kind of draw a circle around all these new projects, you're finding that Dubai Hills is now stri- straight and, and strictly like in the center of, of Dubai. So it's really interesting to look at projects over in, in Motor City, for example, yeah, an older neighborhood, but it's kind of being revamped with some new new uh, projects or anything along the 311 uh, corridor. So this is the highway that runs parallel of the Sheikh Zayed Road. And um, here there's this massive development. Yeah, if you look at the last uh, 10 years, what's kind of sprung up and there's still a lot of uh, uh, plots there to be developed. So coming to how we see the, the market and, and who's buying what, we're seeing that uh, there is a shift over towards the uh, off-plan because of the lack of supply of the secondary markets. And also this means in the prime uh, neighborhoods as well. Yeah? So if you look at downtown and uh, especially Marina, Marina only has a few uh, new buildings coming up. And there's only one or two available plots. Yeah, it's it's almost super mature, which is why Dubai Harbor is so so interesting for these off plan uh, projects. So yeah, I think this this answer is uh, you know who the investor is right now in, in the market and, and what's happening in the secondary and, and and off plan coming over to you know short term rental versus uh, long term. Yes, this is exactly right. We had some discussions in the past that the the supply more than doubled in about a year and a half. And the reason for this, Dubai is very well regulated in terms of the the Airbnb or or short-term markets. And essentially there's no barriers to entry, meaning they're very pro Airbnb, pro short-term rental, where if you, basically it's paid by number. If you follow all these certain steps, you'll be able to add your your, uh, property onto the platforms, and do short-term uh, rental, which is completely different compared to, I don't know, San Francisco, Tokyo, Amsterdam, New York, Paris, all these top-tier global cities where they say there's a housing crunch. And this is a huge uh, debate whether or not uh, you know these uh, properties are, are leading to that. But, but here, there, there's no issue whatsoever. And because the returns were so high in the past, 20, 30, 40, 50, even higher percentages, you know, there is a massive shift over to, to short term. What we see right now, though, it's saturated. So the supply more than doubled. The rates only only dropped, you know, 20, 30 percent, which is a huge, significant drop. But if you look at the, the supply, that's uh, amazing that the ratio is like that. So it depends. I have to say, if you're an investor and uh, you're looking, you know, at the two options, there's nuance behind uh, the, the buildings, the location, the views, the, the fit out, meaning the furniture inside the, the property, things like this, which could lend one or the other to be better. It's very competitive on both sides. 
So it's really interesting to see, you know, where that market's going to head in the future, because there'll always be a, a short term market. And obviously, there's going to always be residents looking for long term rents uh, as well. Yeah. So uh, this is something that we watch uh, very carefully so that we can advise our, our clients uh, accordingly. One thing I want to highlight, we talked about that new home smell, the new car smell, the new home smell. There's a premium on long term rent for newer buildings. What we find is that this premium cannot translate into the photos or the description of an a Airbnb or a short-term uh, listing. Um, only residents are going to know that. Yeah? Uh, they know the building. They know uh, the location, yeah, things like this. And so there's a 20% premium on the first few years of a, a newly developed building. And so this is something that uh, we advise our clients on. And uh, still, we look at the numbers. We try to be as uh, honest and transparent as uh, possible. We work on uh, facts and figures. You know, we we take only uh, data from um, DLD, so Dubai Land Department, review the uh, the transactions. So everything is available. There's a couple of uh, providers. We use Readin. Yeah, another one is Property Monitor. Both of these are subscription based, and there's one called DXB Interact which is a, kind of a simplified version of the data, but it's free and available to use. So if you're an investor or thinking to invest or a current uh, resident, you can go over to DXP Interact and, and take a look at rent transactions, sales transactions. So you can go into your negotiation with either your, your landlord or the seller or whoever, a buyer, yeah, and uh, negotiate a proper deal. Yeah. So this is uh, some super useful tools. And one great thing about Dubai being such a modern and tech savvy, tech friendly uh, city, all this information is available. And in my opinion, it's unlike uh, most cities around the world because of that. We have never seen such an uh, efficient interaction with the government or, or, or transparency and data as in Dubai. I mean, what other government in the world cares how happy its residents are other than <laughs> Dubai, right? And actually tries to make their, yeah. their lives easier. It takes a lot of time and effort to go through and really analyze that data and sort of figure out what's what. And then you also sort of need the practical aspect of it, right? And I mean, I know that that's something that we've talked about a lot in the past. Yeah. You guys do a lot of market analysis. You know, you guys spend a lot of time analyzing the market and what's going on. And then obviously, you know, you also see what, what's going on with, with, with your clients. So, and, and I know that that's something that you guys always bring to the table whenever, you know, you guys get a client that, that you're advising on. So, I mean, essentially, you know, if a client comes to you, whether they're an investor or, or, or a residential person, this is kind of what you do, right? Like you use your experience, you use this knowledge and essentially help them figure out what's going to be sort of the best fit for them, right? And, and you know, one of the biggest challenges as let's say we have a client who wants to buy something. What we find is that they don't 100% know. And it's not a, a an issue or a problem from, from their side, meaning they're not doing it on purpose, but sometimes they don't know the Dubai markets as well as, you know, obviously residents or, or myself or, or my team. And so this is where the, the benefits are coming in. Obviously, we're very client centric. We're very metric driven, but we're also giving that kind of anecdotal secondary information that helps them decide on certain areas and what they want. But this is the most important to get that information down onto the paper, make sure that it's 100% clear, and then we can execute on the plan because it's a really diverse city. If you look at the distance between uh, two of the, the core neighborhoods of downtown Dubai and Marina, it's about you know 20 kilometers which is huge. That would be twin cities in, in some locations, right? So the, it's a vast, vast dynamic city with lots of different options. And so it's really important that uh, the client knows exactly what's out there. And it's our job to present all of that to them. Because we've had some clients who, who knew exactly kind of what they wanted. And we made sure to come with option B, C, D, and E as well to ensure that they know they're getting the best deal and the, the best product that's that's out there in the market. Let's take a, a hypothetical like investor, for example, right? So let's say a guy comes to you 
and they're like, I have 5 million dirhams to invest, right? I want to rent it out. So you would then help them analyze like, okay, given your budget, this is sort of the area that you should look at. You should look at short-term rental versus long-term rental and kind of figure out like for that budget, what's going to get them the best return, right? Whether that be short-term or or long-term rental. Even uh, before that, so it's very important to understand their their investing horizon. Are they looking to flip like with, within one year? Are they looking for pure appreciation or are they looking to cash flow? Are they looking, are they long term? Are they looking to retire somewhere and have passive income? So all these factors are are super important because obviously the the capital appreciation in the let's call it the more mature neighborhoods is going to be less than some maybe of the up and coming. Yeah. What is their risk tolerance? So all these uh, factors and variables are super important. And we go through step by step. Basically, we have a, a paid by number system as well <laughs> with our clients. Of course, there's always some nuance and, and ad hoc uh, requests, but we we make sure that we're understanding our clients 100% in order to service them the best way possible. Yeah, because you know there, there's there's so much uh, nuance behind each investor and the city itself that we really need to make sure that those details are clear. Uh, from their side. As I understand it, you guys do that full service, right? So if you're doing short term, you're basically like, hey, here's my apartment and you guys do the marketing, the cleaning, the fitting it out, yeah. all that yeah. stuff, right? Yeah. So even one step earlier, let's say it's a newly purchased property and there's no furniture. We have an in-house interior designer and fit out team that will go and purchase all the furniture and uh, basically stage the the property, yeah, get it up and ready uh, for the uh, professional photographer, create the listing, uh, do all of the municipality admin. As I said, there's basically low entry points for anyone who wants to do uh, a short-term rental here in the city, but there's a, a list of things and it's a huge hassle. And this is actually one of the funniest things that people don't realize is how much work it is to do short-term uh, rental. So our short-term uh, services are A to Z. We do literally everything. So the investor only needs to, you know, double check their statement at the end of the month or, you know, every quarter, whatever it is that they want to do. But um, basically it's out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. So what I spoke about was just some of those initial steps, but then you have the, the operations. Yeah. So you spoke about it as well. Right. The, the cleaning, the turnovers, dealing with the guests, dealing with the buildings. Right. So that's one thing that some cities are a little different compared to, to Dubai. Here, there, there's really strict uh, building management. So whatever, <laughs> basically, whatever we do for the government, we're actually having to do with the, the building as well in terms of uh, security. Yeah. There's a, a lot of uh, work uh, which is handled on the, the back end. But um yeah, if you look at uh, you know short term versus long term, I mentioned earlier in our conversation that there's going to be nuance to each building, each uh, neighborhood, and things like this. But uh, typically, you're looking at you know a 10, 15, 20 percent better return compared to to long term. But it can be really competitive in certain cases. So we really need to be careful when we talk to our clients, and also it can change very quickly. One interesting thing, uh, Jimmy, is that right now we see a lot of people keeping their properties on short term because the market is so red hot. They want to sell the property. The reason they keep it on short term, it's about 5% more valuable because whoever the purchaser is, they have all options, meaning they could be end user and move in. They can do long term or short term. And the thing is, if there's an end user who's purchasing a home and there's already a tenant inside, it's a minimum of one year notice to inform the tenants and have them evicted. It's a real challenge here in Dubai, positive or negative. Maybe that's another show. <laughs> but uh, the the tenancy laws are very, very strong in favor of the tenant here in, in Dubai. And so what we see on the market right now, and that's leading to some of the supply, is that uh, a lot of people would like to lock in their profits and uh, sell their, their properties right now um, and keeping their properties on short-term rental. 
I mean, that's a really good point that I hadn't thought of. If you keep it on short term, it definitely gives the buyer every option. You guys essentially do the same thing on long term. You guys do a do the full service. You find the tenants, you know, get them in the in the units, manage the ongoing relationship, all that stuff, right? So another thing you need to be careful because the tenancy laws are so strong. If you get a subpar tenant, <laughs> let's say you get a bad bad tenant, you're 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 stuck. And actually, we have a few clients who, even though uh, the earnings on short term are maybe five percent less compared to long term, they are sticking with the short term because of those bad experiences. So maybe the earnings are five percent less, but the challenges that that went through and the costs and the money lost. Uh, because of some some bad tenants was so much, they, they kind of have shock, <laughs> aftershocks and, and PTSD that uh, they want to stay away from uh, long-term tendencies. And so, yeah, some of our clients are on short-term because of that. But but uh, what I wanted to highlight was that you really need to make sure you do due diligence and get a, a proper tenant inside. There's a lot of options out there where basically only the the tenants moving in would be paying the agents uh, a certain fee for uh, finding the, the property and you know all the uh, actions with the municipality and things like that, that which are needed. We actually, as part of our property management, we're, we're charging, it's basically 5% of the, the tenancy fee. But uh, this includes finding a tenant, but we're doing homework, we're doing the due diligence, uh, to ensure that uh, there's not going to be any cases at the RDC, that's the Rental Dispute Center, basically Rental Dispute Courts. But you need to make sure you get the right tenant inside, double checking, salary certificate, for example. These are required, but these are some of the things that we're doing to ensure that we're getting the right tenants inside. But it could be employment certificates, salary certificates. You know, We've seen cases where people have shown up wanting to rent uh, two properties and so uh, providing a salary certificate that <laughs> it's not not uh, coming out to the value of the two properties and you know it's it's simple math and it, it's kind of a joke where people are allowing these people to go in without doing these kind of simple uh, checks okay? and um yeah as i said you know even if you raise a, a case at the RDC, it's going to be a long drawn out process because the tenancy uh, laws are in favor of, of the tenant. So it's really something that you need to make sure that you are, you're covering all your bases and ensuring that so you get the right person in, which is why this is one of the, the services that we uh, provide. I, I have quite a few friends that over the years, you know, have rented out their properties directly, you know, um, mm -hmm. it, ha it hasn't always worked out so well, as, as you said, right? Look, so this, this has been a great episode. Before we sign off, I just wanted to, to see if you had any final thoughts or any sort of tips for people considering buying in, in, in Dubai that you'd like to, like to share. The final tip is no one has a crystal ball, <laughs> right? And people are a bit apprehensive right now to invest in uh, Dubai because it's at red hot record high levels. But I want to, to highlight that there's still a lot of momentum and a lot of tools in the, the government's uh, toolkits. We spoke about some of them uh, earlier with the uh, the tax residency. They've We didn't uh, touch it, but the, there's a whole slew of new visas uh, which have been released since COVID. The most famous is the, the golden visa, which they've recently reduced the, uh, the threshold. The property, one of the criteria for the golden visa, the property needs to be at least valued at 2 million dirhams. But in order to achieve uh, the, the visa, you only need to transact a certain amount in the secondary market. Basically, you just need the, the title lead, yeah? uh, which means if you buy via mortgage, that just means you have to make the, the down payments. Yeah? And then you get the title deed in your name, and then you're good to go, along with a few other criteria for the golden visa. But and by the way, this is something that we can help with as well. And we see a lot of investors coming. But, but what I'm trying to say is that even though the market is still a, a very hot, uh, it's still a very attractive uh, market to invest in. Yes, there will be a correction probably in the near uh, term, maybe let's say one year. Uh, from now, I think there's still a lot of uh, room, uh, wiggle room within the next uh, 12 months. But um, there's still a lot of uh, tools in the toolkit. So when this correction happens, it's not going to be as pronounced as the the past, in in my opinion. Uh, we'll have to wait and see what what happens. You know, with the, this new supply, 
but with all the other initiatives from the UAE government. So it's going to be a really interesting and dynamic place. More than happy to talk to you or any of your clients or whoever is out there listening to this uh, podcast. Let's get in touch. We can get into a detailed discussion about your needs and how we can fulfill them in the Dubai real estate market. Well, Stephen, thank you so much for your time today. It's been an interesting discussion, as, as, as all of our discussions always are. I'm going to make sure to put your contact information in the description so that anybody that has any interest in, in, in the UAE property market, acquiring it or having you manage it or whatever, knows how to get, get in touch with you and, and take advantage of your breadth of knowledge. Thanks again for joining today. Yeah, thanks so much for having me and talk to you soon. Thank you for joining me on Wealth Uncensored, where we help you minimize taxes and protect your wealth for the next generation. If you like our show, be sure to subscribe and leave a review. And if you have any questions or suggestions for future episodes, we'd love to hear from you. You can email us at info at esquiregroup.com. And don't forget to visit Esquire Group's website for more information on how we can help you secure your wealth. I'll be dropping knowledge again next week. Don't forget to join us.